So we're gonna take a look at this premise. And now I gotta use notes because this gets complicated. <laughs> so we have this premise, uh, all knowledge is based on perception. Perception varies from person to person and people disagree on reality, all right? If, this is a one long conjunction. So if we're going to reject this premise, what happens is we, have, we turn each part of the conjunction, right? A conjunction is where you have an and in between. So I am sitting on a rock and the birds are singing. That's a conjunction. If we reject a conjunction, we have to negate each part of the conjunction and turn it into a disjunction. A disjunction is an either or. So if we say it's false that I'm sitting on a rock and there are birds singing, then we say, well, either I am not sitting on a rock or there are not birds singing. Or we have this conjunction, I am sitting on a rock and um, there's a hippopotamus behind me. All right, well, that statement's false. Since we reject that statement, we say either I am not sitting on a rock or there is not a hippopotamus behind me. Okay, so that's what happens when you reject a conjunction. So we have the conjunction, uh, all knowledge is based on perception. Perception varies from person to person and people disagree on reality. If we reject this, we say either not all knowledge is based on perception or perception does not vary from person to person or uh, people agree on reality. Well, let, let's try the, the last part first and we're, we're going backwards. Do people agree on reality? No, <laughs> no. Uh, we can just look at the first set of philosophers that we studied so far and figure out that people don't agree on reality. It won't take long before you find somebody uh, with, with whom you disagree about reality. So yeah, people very much disagree about reality. Okay, perception does not vary from person to person. Uh, well, no, perception does vary from person to person. Um, you know, each person's perspective is unique. Right. Even if I had somebody sitting right next to me, right, there'd still be some difference in the perspective, right? With with the perceptions. If I had one, I had the camera here. If I had another one over there, and I were to flip between the two, uh, you wouldn't. I wouldn't just have the same image, right? You have this kind of jagged image, and I would do it, but I'm not going to because, <laughs> because that takes too long, um, and I don't have a second camera. <laughs> um, you know, not to mention the fact that. You know, even just within oneself, there are variations. Um, how you perceive things changes over time. You lose hearing, your sight dims, or you lose taste, right? We can go on. You know, so you disagree with yourself over time. Uh, people disagree, you know, there are differences in how people perceive, right? I am slightly color deficient, meaning I see colors, just not as many as you do. So you and I can both look at the same object and I might see a different color than you. So yeah, there is, you know, people, there is very, you know, p perception does vary from person to person, so we can't do that. Well, then what about this? Um, not all knowledge is based on perception. Wow, okay, so there's some knowledge, this you know, with this suggestion here, there's some knowledge that's not based on perception. Huh. So I know something without perceiving it. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. That's... Can you think of an example of some kind of knowledge that you know without perception? Let's return, let's, let's put a, a, a thumbtack in that one. Let's come back to that idea maybe at the end of the video. All right, let, let's, let's go on to the next premise. So the next premise, if all, uh, if all knowledge is based on perception, perception varies from person to person and people disagree, then there's no test to determine who's right. All right, so this is a conjunction, and if we reject a conjunction, we have to accept the conjunction with the negation of the second part. So here we go. If I'm sitting on a rock, then I'm sitting on a soft surface. Right, that conditional is false. Right, that conditional is false. So since it's false, I am sitting on a rock, and I am not sitting on a soft surface. Right, so that's how you reject a conditional. So for this one, we say all knowledge is based on perception. Perception varies from person to person. People disagree. And there is a test to determine who is right. Okay. Uh, wow. Hmm. What would this, uh, what would this look like? Uh, okay, so let's try that. Let's say, uh, okay, so maybe we just for the moment accept that all knowledge is based on perception. All right. All right, so this is a conjunction which means we have to accept all the parts of it. So let's start. All knowledge is based on perception. Okay, so we, we 
I mean, maybe that's false, but let's just accept it for the time being. Um, perception varies from person to person. Okay, so right, right. So far, so good. All knowledge is based on perception. Perception varies from person to person. People disagree. So far, all this looks right. The first three parts of this look right. And then we have this last thing. There's a test to determine who's right. Well, what would the test be? Right. If there's a test to determine who's right, and all knowledge is based on perception, then the test has to be perception. Right. Well, if that's true, uh, you know, will people disagree? And your knowledge varies, uh, I'm sorry, perception varies from person to person. So if there's a test to determine who's right, it's based on perception, even though everybody disagrees. And that's all that we have is a disagreement, right? Since it's based on perception, that's all we have is a disagreement. So this all in all, right, this entire conjunction probably is a contradiction. Uh, if there's a test to determine who's right, it can't be based upon the perception because perception is all we have and that's where our knowledge comes from when we all disagree. So this, this premise is probably, I mean, sorry, this uh, contradictory is probably a, uh, it's probably a contradiction. We can't accept this contradictory. If we can't accept the contradictory, we can't reject this premise. Okay, let's try the next one. Uh, if, so the next premise is, if there's a test to determine who's right, then there's no way to distinguish between appearance and reality. So if we reject this premise, we say there is no test to determine who is right. There's no test to determine who's right. And there is a way to distinguish between appearance and reality. Would the way to distinguish between appearance and reality be the test? So this contradictory also results in a contradiction, which means we can't accept this contradictory. And if we can't accept this contradictory, we can't reject the premise. Right? So we can't reject this premise either. Now, so far, that's three premises, and only one stands any chance of being rejected, and it has a weird conclusion, right? some non-empirical knowledge. All right, third premise. If there's no way to distinguish between appearance and reality, then there's no way to know absolute truth. Right? And if we reject this premise, what we're committed to is there is no way to distinguish between appearance and reality, and there is a way to know absolute truth. Wouldn't the way to know absolute truth be the way to distinguish between appearance and reality? So this looks like another contradiction. So this contradictory has a contradiction, which means we can't accept the contradictory. And if we can't accept the contradictory, we can't reject the premise. So this is four premises now, three of them we can't reject because rejecting them results in contradictions. All right, let's try the last one. Uh, if there is no way to know absolute truth, then everyone is right. right. Okay. Well, if we reject this premise, we say there is no way to know absolute truth, and not everyone is right. There's no way to know absolute truth, and not everyone is right. Oh, okay, well, hold on a second. The last part of that statement, not everyone is right, that's not a relative truth, is it, right? A relative truth would be to say something like, not everyone is right upon some condition, right? Not everyone is right during the daytime, right? That'd be a relative truth. Uh, <laughs> um, not everyone is right, depending upon what you believe, right? That, that would be a relative truth. As a state, it's just not everyone is right, regardless of anything else. Well, if not everyone is right, regardless of anything else, that's an absolute truth. And if it's an absolute truth, you know, the first part is that there is no way to know absolute truth. So I don't, there's not everyone is right. That's an absolute truth, but I don't know it. It's not exactly a logical contradiction, but it's strange. I wouldn't want to accept that premise. Right? Not everyone is right. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Not everyone's right. Do you know this? No, I don't, because there's no way to know absolute truth. Mm. So these are Protagoras' premises. And, I, it, it, you know, so far they're a little, yeah, so far we, we, have been, we can't reject three of them. The first one, if we try to reject it, it results in something weird. We have this non-perceptual knowledge we have to talk about. Um, and 
And this last one, we say, well, there's, there's absolute truth, but I don't know it. Uh, by the way, all of mathematics, we tend to think of mathematics as absolute, so we don't know any math anymore okay. with that last one. So rejecting Protagoras' conclusion comes with some difficulties. Either we don't know any absolute truths, maybe we just guess at them, <laughs> or we appeal to some kind of non-perceptual knowledge. That's hard. Well, let's move on to Gorgias' premises. See if we can figure out a premise to reject. Protagoras is hard. Maybe rejecting Gorgias will give it, get us a way out. Okay, so the first premise we're looking at. If something exists, then we use perception to know the thing. If we reject this premise, we're committed to its contradictory, which is something exists and we do not use perception to know the thing. Huh. Well, we got some non-perceptual knowledge again. We saw this earlier with Protagoras. Gorgias seems to pop up again. I asked you to think of an example of <laughs> uh, something you know without using perception. Have you thought of one yet? All right, let's move on to the next premise. If we use perception to know the thing, then our perceptions are not the thing. So looking around, right? I perceive green and brown to know that there's a tree there. Now the tree is wood, water, cellulose, vitamins, minerals, things like that, right? Uh, that's not the same thing as green and brown. Green and brown are caused by uh, uh, I'm sorry, green and brown are caused by the wood, the cellulose, the vitamins, minerals, all that, uh, but it's not identical to that. So if we were to reject this premise, we say we use perceptions to know the thing, and our perceptions are the thing. So if we say this, we say, well, that tree over there, it's not wood and cellulose and water and vitamins and minerals. What it is is green and brown. That, that's kind of strange. Believe it or not, we're going to see a philosopher who says this with a serious, straight face. It's like, yeah, you, you think that's wood. It's, an, it's not wood. That's just silly. There's no wood over there. What's over there is green and brown. It's called metaphysical idealism. Um, probably not going to, or as I just saw, it's just called idealism. Uh, I, you know, probably not going to accept that one. So let's just leave that aside for now. Maybe we have to come back to it, but we'll just leave that aside for now. <laughs> okay. So, so far, we get rejected one premise, gives us non-perception knowledge. Rejected the second premise, we have idealism, which is weird. All right, next premise. If our perceptions are not the thing, then we know our perceptions, but not the thing. All right. So, uh, if we reject this premise, what we're saying is our perceptions are not the thing. All right. And either we do not know our perceptions or we know the thing. Now, the reason why we had this premise to begin with is, um, or, you know, what, what uh, uh, Gorgias is getting at here is to say that uh, <laughs> uh, we know our perceptions, right? I have, I have my perceptions green or brown. Uh, but since that's what I know, I don't know wood, cellulose, fiber, minerals. Uh, that's what I, you know, I don't know that. All I know is green or brown. So if we reject this premise, we say our perceptions are not the thing, and either we do not know our perceptions or we know the thing. Well, we probably don't want to say that our perceptions, you know, you, we don't want to get rid of it. Our perceptions are not the thing. Yeah, that, that seems right, right? That's wood, metal, I'm oh, sorry, that, that's a, a cellulose, water, oil, vitamins, and minerals, right? When I walk away, my perceptions of that thing go away. I don't have the perceptions, of but the thing remains. Right? So we don't want to say our perceptions are, you know, we don't want to say our perceptions are the thing. Right? So, you know, okay, so we're to keep that. Our perceptions are not the thing. And now we have a, a disjunction. Either we do not know our perceptions or we know the thing. All right. uh, well, let's just grant that we know the thing. Okay. Now we're going to say we don't know our perceptions? I mean, I don't think anybody wants to give up the idea that we know that, that there's a tree. Okay. Uh, so we have to give up, um, we do not know our perceptions? Hmm. Well, here's the thing, though. So what we can do is we can say our perceptions are not the thing, fine, and yet we know the thing. All right, if our perceptions are not the thing, and yet we know it, 
what we know is non-perceptual, which is weird. So we can reject this premise, and that, that's fine. But the only way that we can reject this premise and accept the contradictory is if we say there's some kind of non-perceptual knowledge. Accounting for that is going to be hard. So the next premise. If we know our perceptions but not the thing, then the thing is incomprehensible. So if we reject this, right, we, we, we're committed to, we know our perceptions, but we don't know the thing, and yet it's comprehensible. This is probably a contradiction. <laughs> we, I know it, but it's not comprehensible. So, wait, what? Uh, so no, that, um, or sorry, I don't know this thing. I don't know this thing, but it's in, and yet it's still comprehensible. How can you know it? I can't, there's no way, but it's comprehensible. All right, that's not gonna work, right? That's not gonna work. That's probably a contradiction. Okay, next premise. If something is comprehensible, then a person uses symbols to talk about it. Right. So symbols, right? So if I understand trees, what do I use? I use words to talk about trees. Maybe I draw something to talk about trees, right? It's not the same thing as the thing symbolized. These are symbols. Okay, pretty standard stuff. If we reject this premise, what we're saying is something is comprehensible and a person does not use symbols to talk about it. I understand something. What is it? Can't tell you. But I understand it. Well, can you tell me anything about it? Not really. I can't use symbols. I can't use words to talk about it. I mean, I, I, if you can think of something, I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to see an example. That, that's probably going to be impossible since an example is going to use symbols to talk about it. But <laughs> uh, if you can think of something, that, I'd be kind of curious to see what you come up with. But I don't, this isn't necessarily a logical contradiction, but it, it, uh, I don't know what it'd be. I've got secret knowledge that I can't talk to you about. I was like, well, I don't know if you got secret knowledge then, buddy. All right, next premise. If a person uses symbols to talk about it, then the symbols are not the same thing as the thing symbolized, and symbols are understood only by the speaker. So what Gorgias is trying to get at here is that, you know, you know, I use symbols to talk about trees, where I use words to talk about trees. The words are not the same thing as the thing symbolized, right? I could say wood, cellulose, water, oil, but I am not thereby making wood, cellulose, water, and oil, right? I, I'm not speaking these things into existence. So it's not the same thing as the thing symbolized. Um, and the symbols are understood only by the speaker. What Gorgias is getting at here is only I know what I mean when I talk about wood, cellulose, water, and oil. You haven't, you don't have access to my mind, right? Especially since we're not even in the same room together right now. <laughs> we're not even in the same place, same time. By the time you watch us, I will have got, left this place. So there's no way that we, you know, I could just directly transmit uh, what's in my mind. Even if you were sitting right next to me, I couldn't directly transmit what's in my mind. So only I know what I mean when I talk about trees. So if we're going to check this premise, what we're saying is a person uses symbols to talk about it. I use words to talk about trees. Either the symbols are the same thing as the thing symbolized. So I say tree and it comes into existence or the symbols are not understood only by the speaker. Okay. Well, we're probably not gonna say the symbols are the same thing as the thing symbolized, unless we just start talking about creation by verbalization, we're gonna do that. So we're left with a person uses symbols to talk about it, and yet symbols are not understood only by the speaker. More than one person understands the symbols. Well, how's that gonna happen? We don't really have a logical contradiction, but the question is, how is it going to happen? Any way that we convey symbols is going to be through some kind of sensory input. If I'm going to speak to you using words, you have to be able to hear them. If I'm going to write out words on a screen, you've got to be able to see the words, right? So you're always going to use perception. So the meaning of those words, of those symbols, is not going to be in the perception, right? So... If, there's under, if they're understood by more than one person, probably going to have to appeal to some kind of non-perceptual knowledge. And even weirder, non-perceptual knowledge that we all have access to. Wow. Okay. All right, next premise. If symbols are not the same thing as the thing symbolized, and symbols are understood only by the speaker, then no one else understands what a person is talking about. Right. 
Okay, well, if we reject this proposition, this premise, what we're saying is symbols are not the same thing as the thing symbolized, and symbols are understood only by the speaker, and it's false that no one else understands what a person is talking about. So we say, oh, okay, so symbols are not the same thing as the thing symbolized, and only I know what I mean by my symbols. Yet, you understand me. How would that work? Um, I am, and so if this contradictory is right, then I am speaking right now, but nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm just speaking gibberish. And yet you understand? No, right? That, this is probably a contradiction. <laughs> this is probably uh, a contradiction. And if this is a contradiction, we can't accept this contradictory. Thus, we can't uh, reject the premise. Right? So we have to keep this premise. If um, these symbols are understood only by the individual, then we can't communicate. Okay, so the next premise. If no one else understands what a person is talking about, then communication is impossible. If we reject this premise, we are committed to no one else understands what a person is talking about and communication is possible. Well, let me show you how that will work. Got it? <laughs> now, unless we somehow learn telepathy, <laughs> um, this is just false. It's not a contradiction. It's just false, right? It's just false. Um, we have to use symbols in order to communicate with each other, and we have to understand what these symbols mean, independent of perception. Well, all right. So, so far, it looks like the main way that we're going to get out of both Protagoras and Gorgias is some appeal to non-perceptual knowledge. And I asked you to think of an example of something that you know without the use of perception. Uh, it's not justified by the perception. It's not the same thing as the perception, right? Okay, did you think of an example? Well, oh, okay, pause the video and try to think of an example. I'll wait. So, trying to think of an example of non-perceptual knowledge. Numbers. Right? You, you don't perceive numbers. You might perceive a numeral, but that's not the same thing as a number. You might perceive two things next to each other, but that's not the same thing as the number two. Right? The number two uh, come, it does not come and go with your perceptions. You perceive numerals and they go away. You perceive pairs of things and they go away. But the number two is still something that is true and exists. Right? Two plus two equals four. Right? This is true independent of perception. And if you don't believe me, it's like, well, I've seen two pairs of things and then I got four. Like, okay, but I can start thinking of numbers that are arbitrarily large. You can be able to add them together and you will you know, not have used perception because you can't perceive that many things at once, right? So 65,482 plus uh, 4,608. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to try and add that up at the top of my head because... I just thought of those two numbers right now, but you know, you can add those, right? You can add those together and you will be able to uh, come up with something that's true, but it doesn't rely upon perception because you can't, I mean, maybe you, you, you could sort of perceive that many things at once, but you don't perceive them as a multitude of things. If you don't believe me, how many leaves are behind me? <laughs> you don't know. Okay, there's not that many leaves. Uh, <laughs> uh, how many twigs are behind me? Right? You don't know just by perception. You have to sit there and count it. Right? You have to pause the screen and count it. And yet you've been staring at it this whole time. Yeah. Um, you know, how many hairs do I have on my head? <laughs> uh, you, you can't perceive number. So yeah, this is an example of something that you know without perception. Even people who uh, do not have sight. They can understand mathematics. Do not have hearing. They can understand mathematics, right? Uh, in theory, I suppose, uh, you know, you, you can understand these without very much, if any, perception at all. Yeah. There's other kinds of form, too. Sure. The scientific method, that's form, right? The scientific method is not 
the thing that's perceived. It uses perceptions. Okay, we have to use perceptions in order to use the scientific method, but the scientific method is not the same thing as the thing perceived. If you think it is, what color is the scientific method? So this non-perceptual knowledge, you already think they're examples. And that's going to be our way to escape Protagoras and Gorgias. But non-perceptual knowledge is strange. How do we know, right? How do we know what we think we know absent perceptions? It's not hard to say there's a tree behind me. How do I know? Because I see it. If I say something like there's a tree behind me, how do I know? Not through sight. That would be weird. Yeah. But still, this, this, what Protagoras and Gorgias have given us, have given us these, these conclusions that we cannot accept. We can't accept these conclusions and be rational. We have to reject them. But it sure seems like the main way, if not the only way, that we can reasonably reject these uh, conclusions is to appeal to some kind of non-perceptual knowledge. This is going to send us running and screaming to Plato and Aristotle, who are going to try and give us some account of non-perceptual knowledge. <laughs>